welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I really wanted to go over pitching because in my last video, I promised that I would go over that a little bit to show you guys how really easy it is to actually pitch you know, not just for paid jobs, for content creation jobs, for test shoots, for just content in order to build your portfolio. So I really wanted to show you guys different ways that you can pitch, different platforms that I use to pitch, how I find people to pitch to, and give you just an idea so that you don't feel nervous you know when it comes to talking or reaching out to people because if you think about it you cannot be nervous when it comes to this you gotta go for it you gotta give it your all if this is something that you really genuinely desire to do as being a stylist or just creating content or maybe you just want brand partnerships you have to be comfortable with reaching out to people and so pitching is going to be your best way in order to do that so that you can get out there people need to know that you exist people need to know that you're interested interested in creating and that you're interested in styling, that you're interested in just creating content with people, partnerships. Everything is about relationships and partnerships. And that is why it's so important to feel comfortable enough to reach out to people and also know exactly what to say. And don't just get overwhelmed when it comes to what to say, because it's not hard, guys. It's really just being comfortable with who you are, being comfortable with what you bring to the table, and just knowing that no matter what, you're going to be learning, you're going to be growing, and you're going to be building your business. If you have not yet subscribed, make sure that you definitely go ahead and do so so that you can get all the content related to mindset shifts in order to build your business as a stylist, a fashion influencer, and just live your best life doing what it is that you absolutely love to do. Whether you're starting out or you're trying to figure it out or you already got your foot in the door, I know that this channel will add so much value to you and I would love for you to follow, join me on this journey as I build out my business from being a commercial stylist, celebrity stylist, sports stylist, with all these different avenues that I've gone, I am now working from home and I would love for you guys to be on a journey with me as I build this channel out. And if you're not following me on Instagram yet, make sure that you go ahead and do so. I definitely add a lot of styling, more tips, and also every day just looks and style. So make sure that you go ahead and check out my Instagram and follow me over there as well. All right, so me, for example, when I was pitching sports industry people, I wanted to work more in the sports industry. I wanted to work with managers, agents, athletes. Um, so what I did was I did a lot of research. Now, research is gonna be your best friend because you have to find the people that you want to work with and you have to do that by google searching like google is your best friend even youtube is your best friend but when it comes to finding specific people and how to get their information google is my best friend and these are some of the platforms that i use in order to find people and one of them is called rocket research Rocket Research is clutch. When I was launching a beauty brand and I really needed help with investments and I really needed people to connect with, to help me learn, mentors, just different people in the industry, startups and all those things, I knew that Rocket Reach was gonna be my best friend because with this platform, you can literally put someone's name in and find their email. That is the best way. Now, I know in my previous video, like I said before, I was talking about the sports industry. That's where I came from. I was an athlete and I also just knew the people to contact in order to get in contact with the right people. And so Rocket Reach was my best friend. And then I also just Google searched a database that had managers, agents, and different people that worked within the sports industry that I could reach out to. And it literally was not me knowing like, oh, okay, I know this is the website I need to go to. I literally just typed in Google search professional athlete agents or database for you know sports industry. I did a lot of research and that is going to be your best friend, not only on Google search, but also on Instagram 
or on uh, LinkedIn or just different platforms that you know your ideal customer is going to be, or you know where that person is who can connect you to the right people for your perfect customer. And when you are looking for those people, you can look by their social handle. You can search, for example, say just fashion stylist. If you are searching fashion stylist, you can literally just type in Instagram fashion stylist, or you can type in Google search fashion stylist, or you can type in Google search um, professional NFL agents in Texas. You know, you can literally put down the specific details for your searches because the more detailed you are, are, of course, the more it's going to push out the information that you're looking for. So really, before you even start researching, just write down, you know, who that ideal customer is, write down who surrounds them, who they work with. Um, maybe, for example, like I said, with the sports industry, it's managers, it's agents, it's people in their network that they have to connect with, it's coaches, you know, it's finding those right people. And I knew that as far as professional athletes that they want to have a presence outside of just playing, outside of just sports. And so I knew that endorsements, endorsement deals were a huge thing for them. I knew that them wanting to be in other avenues outside of just sports was going to be how, you know, they would enhance their overall brand. And branding is key in any industry. And that is why I so strongly suggest making sure that you're doing the right branding before you start reaching out to people, which I did. If you didn't check out my last video on how to rebrand yourself in order to reach out to these people so that when they find you, they know exactly who you are, exactly what you do, exactly what your services are. I highly recommend you check out that video because it's going to give you more of an idea of how you need to have your brand set up so that when people reach out to you they or when people search you, they know exactly who you are and what the services are that you're going to be providing them. Now, let's say for for example, let's do two. Let's say, for example, that you want to work on commercials, which I absolutely love styling commercials. But let's say that you wanted to work on commercials. Let's say that you wanted partnerships with different people that, for example, I did Under Armour a lot. So what you would do is actually search for production companies. You know, you would search for companies that actually shoot commercials and you would look in your area. You would look maybe in other areas and you would build a relationship with those people because they are going to be the ones that hire you for the job and specifically is going to be the producer. The producer and having a good relationship with the director as well, but the producer is going to be the one that's going to be reaching out to you to book you for the job. They're building out the, you know, the sheets where they say who's on set and who's this day and who's that day, a call sheet. So you're going to want to build a relationship with them in the same way that you would, for example, look for the right people for sports industry. You look for people who would do commercials in that way. You look for people who would maybe be artists in that way and you would reach out to their network and you would also don't be scared to reach out directly to the person. Like a lot of times I think we're really scared to just put ourselves out there. And I mean, honestly, like I said in that self-sabotage video, the only person that's stopping you is you. The only person that's stopping you from achieving your goals is you. I strongly believe that because I did it myself. Self-sabotaging will cause you so much delay in how great you already are. So just put yourself out there and definitely do not be scared to reach out. Now, a tip that I would give to someone who is actually just starting out and trying to figure out their way into the industry, maybe you don't really have you know, a huge portfolio or a portfolio at all, and you really just need some content in order to get the ball rolling and get you know your foot in the door, then I would suggest that you reach out to up and coming people just like you. So for example, when we were talking about creating a portfolio, reaching out to up and coming uh, makeup artists, photographers, maybe videographers, you would do the same thing with their ideal client. So let's say for example, you wanted to, okay, style professional athletes. I just keep referring to that just because it's my personal experience. But say you wanted to work with sports industry people, you wanted to work with, um, you know, athletes, NBA players. 
you would reach out to some rookies or even some up and coming all stars in your area because you know if you do the right research that they're going to get drafted. They're going to get their foot out there. They're going to be seen. They're already seen. Look at their social hand. You know, look at what they have going on right now. Maybe they're not a LeBron right now. Or maybe they're not, you know, a Carmelo right now. But there's someone who's a rookie that's doing very well where they are right now. And they're getting noticed. They're getting seen reach out to them and just let them know the reason behind you reaching out and that you're really wanting to help them with their overall brand because you see them blowing up like you know they're going to be doing well and you want to be there in the beginning you know what i mean so you want to start thinking about you know it in that way maybe you're not getting paid right off bat to style them maybe you are but you also need to remember that you have to build your brand you have to build your portfolio and in order to do that you have to start shooting some type of content. So make sure that when you're doing that is with your ideal look client. And even if it's not someone that's like I said, up there like that, it's going to make all of the difference because it's going to be someone in your portfolio who looks exactly like your ideal customer. So I strongly recommend that you work with up and coming people that are where you want to build your portfolio into becoming. So rookies are good. Good. You know, like I said, college players that, um, you know, are are on, already on the board to get draft, no matter what sports industry it is, you can definitely do that. Even with artists, you can do the same thing with up and coming artists. I have a really good friend of mine that's a songwriter. And he will work with up and coming, um, you know, artists all the time, writing for them. People would send him beats. He would write, you know, different songs and ship it out to people. And he did that for up and coming people, but he also did it for people who was already popping. But he got his big break from someone who he was working with that wasn't signed yet. And when they got signed, he also got signed to the record label. So it's the same thing in, in the industry. That's why I love giving details because when I do, I'm like, oh, that is what happened. So yes, I'm telling you, get your foot in the door, y'all. Don't be so quick to just feel like, oh, I need to be getting this client or I need to be making this much right now. Like you got to get your foot in the door and it's okay to start with up and coming people because you may be yourself. And as they grow, you will also grow. Okay. So we touched on the branding side. We touched on, you know, the platforms that you can use to reach out to people. We touched on even who the people are. You should be reaching out to but also we need to touch on what you'll be saying and it is very very important to know that you don't want to send the same message to everybody and the reason is every industry is different every goal is different every intention is different and so you need to know that before reaching out to your ideal client or the person that you're interested in working with you need to figure out what it is that they would be wanting to work with you for you need to know what it is that they're passionate about you need to know why they would be wanting a stylist or why they would want to, whether it be brand partnershiping with you, like you need to have that in your mind before you reach out to each person. So I just want to say that in regards to pitching and not sending a, a mass email to, you know, a bunch of different people with the same message. It's not okay. Trust me, I did it before. It does not work. You need to really do that. And I learned that as well when it came to even pitching for like a startup and things like that. Um, I have so much that I've done in, in my, my past with my, my work experience and all that. Uh, I think maybe that's why I have so much knowledge outside of just fashion styling. But that's totally not what this video is about, but I just want to say, make sure that you do not send out mass emails, the same email to everybody. You don't know who knows who, and you also just want to make sure that it's a personal note. That's that's so important. Like You have to make sure that it's more of a personal feel, a personal vibe when you're reaching out to these people because... What did I always say? Styling is a personal, intimate type of thing. So you got to make sure that it's genuine when it comes across and that they feel that. So I thought that it would be cool to give you ideas on ways to pitch by examples. 
I love examples. So let's say, for example, you want to work with professional athletes and you're not sure what to say. Maybe it's an event coming up. Maybe it's the NBA draft. Maybe it's, you know, something that they're going to be attending and you'd like to style them for that. So that can be a way to pitch. You can also just think about what um, what they may be interested in. What What is it that they are going to be expanding themselves into other markets or things like that? Why? Maybe there's social media handle. You'd love to work with them because you see, you know, they're growing in in sports or they're growing in this area and you want to help them with their personal branding. Like these are different specific things that you can reach out in regards to, hey, my name is Brianna and I am a stylist and I would love to work with you. I can see the vision and I know that, you know, I can I can help you with your overall style and your brand and draw more attention, you know, in the way that you desire. And I know that, you know, my expertise and the things that I, you know, you can just say things that will show them that you genuinely see the effort that they're already putting in and how you can help enhance enhance their overall style. Now, in regards to maybe interning and assisting, maybe you do want to work with a celebrity stylist or you do want to work on a major production set. You do, <coughs> excuse me, you do want to make sure that you do research on the person that you want to work with in regards to maybe a stylist or someone that's already in there doing it. You want to tell them, hey, I love your work. I see what you're doing and I know that I can add value. Maybe you know some other you know, showrooms or maybe you know some stores or maybe you already have some boards put together of people that they work with and you can help enhance and just add value. That's my whole point. No matter what you're doing when you're pitching, you want to make sure that it comes across that you are adding value and that you're not just trying to take, like you're not just trying to soak up all this information and you're not bringing anything to the table. It's one of the biggest things that I learned. You want to make sure that no matter what the job is, no matter who you're pitching, you are going to be adding value to that person. You're going to be adding value to what they have going on. And in return, you're going to be learning so much from that. You're going to be building your portfolio. You're going to be building your own business. You're going to be building your brand and it's all going to come together. All right. I hope you guys found some value in this video in regards to pitching. Know that it's really simple guys. I want you to know that branding is the most important thing. And when you do reach out via email or DM, you let them know that you are going to be adding value to them and that you clearly see the vision and you know how you can help enhance their style and the reasons behind why you want to do that because you see the ways that it can help them grow, whether it be their branding, whether it be them getting endorsement deals, whether it be, you know, you adding value to another stylist and knowing different places you can go to. Just tell them that you want to add value to them and that you are just excited and looking forward to working with them. You see you can build together and all those things. I know that it seems like it's so hard to reach out to people, but really it starts with inside. You can do this, guys. And I hope that if you have any questions, you feel that you can leave me a comment below. I'm here to answer anything and I will see you guys in the next video.